All right. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come together the people of God on this Ascension Sunday to give praise and worship to our risen Savior, to celebrate the gift of redemption given to us the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and to do our resolve to live as his faithful disciples. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. O God, King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom of heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us, so that the place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory, will everlasting. Amen. Amen. Our opening again is Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Stand and sing.
confirm the faith we profess with the Apostles' Creed found in 81 in the hymn. Let us join in this historic confession of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be a obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of our need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven people, let us stand and greet each other with signs of reconciliation. Let's go down, come on down, come on brother. 
Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the sorry crown? Good Lord, show me the way Now this is Mother's Day, and oh, that's, that's there's a there's a story. Well, one of my favorite moments in the Bible is uh, the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee, and this is where Jesus and his mother are both there. And uh, this is the kind of the interaction that you see between Jesus. Now his family's there, the disciples are there, it says his brothers and sisters are there, and this big wedding banquet. And in the, toward the end of the banquet, somewhere, Mary finds out that they've run out of wine. And she goes to Jesus, and she tells him, they're out of wine. And Jesus gives a typical response that most kids give. Oh, Mom! What does this have to do with me? And notice that Mary just completely ignores him. She turns to her and says, do what he says. And that's what Jesus does. He, he takes care of the thing. He changes the water into wine. And then he takes care of it. But th th this is a very human moment. This is where we can see the real humanity of Jesus Christ in his relationship that he has with his mother. It's a real relationship. It's a relationship just like all of us have. And we all have that, oh, mom, moments. <laughs> and of course, sometimes, as parents, we've been the ones that said, yeah, right, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Just completely ignored it. <coughs> Jesus came to live our life, a real life, with real relationships of families. And he had a real relationship with his mother as well. He was there from the very beginning, all the way to, to his body being laid on her, her, her lap. Uh, that beautiful statue by Michelangelo that we've all seen and sits in the Vatican, the Pieta, that Jesus mourns over his body. So Jesus had a real, real, uh, the reality of this relationship is the relationship that he experienced and the relationship that he blesses with us as we honor our moms on this uh, this Mother's Day. Now the song is a written from the perspective of a child whose mother has been teaching. Mommy told me something that every kid should know. It's all about the devil, and I learned to hate him so. She said he causes trouble if you let him in the room. He will never, ever leave you if your heart is full of blue. So let the sun shine in, face it with a grin. Smilers never do, and frowners never win. So let church and uh, uh, after what 27 years of doing it uh, keeping us on track and keeping us on budget and all that sort of stuff uh, handing over the books to Kathleen who's now taking over but uh, we have this uh, gift for you man oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> in appreciation for all your the service that you do for God and for the, through the ministry of this church Oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and of course, we come to the time in our service where we uh, return some of the resources that God has entrusted to us to the mission and ministry of this church with our tithes and our offerings. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good and perfect gifts, we thank you for the blessing upon blessing you lavish so generously upon us. Give us generous hearts that the resources you give us may be used to build your kingdom upon this earth. Amen. Amen. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that it is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sin sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had been out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple praising God. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Last uh, Thursday was the day of the ascension and it marks the end of easter season it's 40 days after easter and it's the time where jesus is goes out to the mount of olives and he's taken up to heaven he finally ascends to heaven it's the last appearance he has post-resurrection appearance 
that he has with his disciples. And uh, there's, a, he, he, there's two things that he does, and one's recorded in Matthew, one's recorded in Luke. The first thing he says is, uh, uh, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to believe and teaching them everything I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. We call it the Great Commission. And it's our mission, and it's the general mission that all uh, believers have, is to go and make disciples, bring the good news of great joy, bringing it out to, to a world that is in desperate need of hearing it. And we can see that in the world around it, that it does desperately need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. The song that I say for the kids, let the sun shine in, full of optimism, the smiling, lift your hearts, be joyful. God wants you to live a joyful life. And he said, the, where, where does the devil? The devil brings you gloom and makes you frown. We've seen a lot of news about people frowning and grumbling and not living a happy life. And that's not what God meant. That's not what God intends for us. I came to bring life and life abundant. You may have, you have my joy, my jo and your joy may be complete. We're meant to live optimistic, happy lives. And that's what Jesus commands us to do with this, with this great commission. Go and bring that good news of great joy that is there for all people. The other thing that Jesus does before he sends is this uh, uh, command that he gives uh, the disciples. He says, uh, I'm going, to send, I'm going to send what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Of course, we know that comes on the day of Pentecost. So we're in this little gap right now in between seasons of the church. It, uh, Easter season is over. It ended on Thursday with the Ascension. And next Sunday is the day of Pentecost. Next Sunday is the day that the church received the Holy Spirit. It's the birthday of the church. It's the creation of the body of Christ. We're now in this 10-day this kind of gap between the two. As the disciples go back to Jerusalem and start anticipating the coming of the power. I don't know how many of you were in Junction on Tuesday to hear Rafael Cruz. None of you? Oh, you missed it. It was good. He, he, had, he had a lot to say about the church and our responsibility about uh, about uh, uh, what what our responsibility is to the world to bring the good news to bring to to make disciples of the nation and he had a lot of criticism of the church for recently being too nice being too polite and he laid it very specifically on the, the feet of the pastors who aren't leading churches so I got, I got to talk to but that's a good thing. Uh, Jim Barker from the Presbyterian Church was there, and, and Steve Myers from the Baptist Church was there as well. Those are the other two pastors I saw there. But that, but, 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 it, but it's true. We have been intimidated into being polite. We've been intimidated into not bringing the good news. We, we don't want to impose our values on other people. They're not our values. They're God's values, and they apply to everyone. We've been, we've been told that we must, we must be nice. Well, being nice is a Christian thing to do. You know, Jesus uh, pulled out a whip and kicked over some tables. <laughs> so, you know, really pulling out a whip and kicking over a table, if you're imitating Christ, that's within the state of parameters. And because we've been so, and then what, what Cruz was saying was because we've been so nice, because we've been so polite, because we've been so afraid that we don't offend, we wanted people to like us instead of going out and bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. We wanted people, we've been so worried about not being offensive that we've ended up going along with everything. We haven't said no. We haven't said this is enough. We haven't said this is wrong. We haven't, we haven't stood up and said, no, if you're a boy, you're a boy, and if you're a girl, you're a girl, and you can't change. That's actually in Scripture. They say, there's a point, and I, I wish I looked it up because so I don't remember where it is, <laughs> but the, where, where, where God asked, can a man give birth? No. You're, you're a man, you're not a woman. 
There's, and the, the, we, 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 acquiesced and we've given in. And when Bacruz was telling us, it was, was preaching that day, and it was, it was, I know his, his frame is a political event, but it was, it was, a, it was a theological event. He is a pastor. He, he escaped from, from, a, from a, he's the, uh, Raphael Cruz is the father of Senator Ted Cruz, by the way. You don't know that. But, uh, he, he said that, that and he, he, he mentions this, uh, this, what Jesus is telling us at the, the ascension. He says, first of all, Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. The authority of Scripture has been given to me, and I'm passing that on to you. I'm giving you, by the authority of God, by the authority of Christ, to go make disciples of all nations. To go out into the world with authority and that confidence. Because this is what God has given you to do. The other thing that he points out is stewardship. God placed man in this, in, this, uh, in creation to keep it and to till it. That's what we're to do. It is our responsibility. We, don't, we, we, we tend to turn and say, well, God will take care of it. No. God is saying, well, no, you're to take care of it. You're to be the ones. You are the hands and feet. You are the voice of Christ in this world. You are to go out and make disciples, to bring the good news, to preach the gospel. Your sins are forgiven. But in response to that, there are certain things that are expected of you. In response to the gift of grace, and it is a free gift. We can't earn our way to heaven. But in, in response to that love that God has given us, it's our responsibility to be this example of Christ in the world. It's our example to live good, decent, moral lives. It's, 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 when our, it's our responsibility to preach the, the Torah, to say, look, this is the loving God, guidance of our loving God. You're expected to behave. You're expected. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not uh, commit adultery. Do not, th th those things mean something. And these are not the expectations of Christians or Jews. This is the expectation of God himself, of all of his children. And we need to be bold. It's time, look at what being nice has gotten us in our society. And we need to go out and, do, and, and, and preach the gospel. Go out and, 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 and wage the gospel into a world that needs to hear it. So the first thing is, Jesus has, has all authority. Secondly, he's given us to be the stewards of this creation. We're here. He left us, he left in order for us to, to take responsibility and do it. To take care of it. The other thing he does, he says, stay in Jerusalem and you'll be clothed with power on our high. God not only commands us to do that, do this, but he empowers us to do this. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to go into this world. We have the power of the Holy Spirit behind us. To go out and make this different and make this, this kingdom, bring about God's kingdom upon this earth. And sometimes people are going to tell us we're not being nice. But we've all had to sometimes discipline our children. And our children have told us it's not nice, but we know it's because we love them. And we know it's because that they need that protection. One of the things that my memory about my son, one time we were in our apartment. And there was a plug on the wall. There was a little socket. And he was, he was less than a year old. And he was playing on the ground. He reached up for that, for, for that socket and then it landed. And the first thing I did was say, no, 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 that will hurt you. Don't do that. He crawled around me. <laughs> reached for it again. This time I poked him and said, no, don't touch that. That will hurt you. Crawled back around. <laughs> now, I, I can't let my son play with electricity. I can't let him zap himself. I can't. That, that, would, that would hurt. I picked him up, put him outside, and I slapped his hand. I said, no. Don't do that. That will hurt you. And he looked at me like, why did you do that? <laughs> hurt. Hurt me. But he never touched that. That, that was him. That was important. God has given us the power to do and the responsibility to be stewards of this, and this, this world to go out and make disciples. And it's time we stop being nice about it. <clears throat> Our song of reflection is Spirit of the Living God.
I got it right this time. <laughs> you may remain seated as we prepare to go before the third grade. Spirit of the
kids are very close. It's their grandmother, and but they're very sad. So I ask for prayers for Drew Ivins and his family. Mighty God, we ask your healing touch upon Carla that uh, her shoulder may may heal, that uh, she may feel uh, relief of pain and, and, and suffering. We pray for uh, her son Drew and, and the, the loss and, and his family. Um, we pray that your presence be with them, that your comfort and your peace be with their hearts. We take, uh, we ask uh, that they know your your that blessed assurance that comes from your love. We ask in your name. Amen. Amen. It was joy for yesterday's baptism. I thought that was very well done and well received by all, so that was a joy. I have a concern for traveling mercies for Ron and Susie on their trip oh, over yeah. the big pond. Over the big pond. Almighty God, we thank you for the success of yesterday, the blessing that you gave us, the good weather, and the, 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 the hearts of the, the, uh, the owners of Morgan Shade that allowed us to use their, their property. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to baptize and then seal uh, the souls of, of, of your children for your glory and for your honor. We pray for Ron and, 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 uh, and Suzanne as they go to, uh, to, uh, to Greece and follow in the, the footsteps of Paul for some of their journeys. Bless them and be with them and protect them. We ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. It's a joy to see Sissy here. Yeah. <laughs> we have Sissy with us. Yeah. Mighty God, we thank you for the presence of Sissy. Amen. And another joy. I love having Diane here. I'm glad she's well enough to come and sing for us. Mighty God, we thank you for Diane. We thank you for the vocal talent you've blessed her with. Amen. I'd like to say thank you for the gift of appreciation from everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mighty God, we thank you for Nan the many years of service that she's given for this church. We thank you for uh, the strength that she's given her and, and, and the, the love that she has for you. Amen. I'd like to thank you for the sermon you gave today. Yes, yeah, exactly. Hey, you do it. Just do what boss told me to do. <laughs> Sometimes hard love is good love. Yeah. yeah. That's what For us to have a more joyful attitude when mm -hmm. we hear the negative news. Mm -hmm. And if we all need to do that. Well, today is Mother's Day. This observance was created as a time when we honor our mothers who carry each of us into this world and raise us to be the people that we become. It's fitting to honor these women for their selfless sacrifice that they made for each one of us. And we thank God for the gift of motherhood and ask his blessing upon them. Beyond their biological mothers, we have other women who throughout their lives have extended in each of us, to each of us, the same humble service we call motherhood. I was given this uh, many years ago, I don't know who wrote it, but it reminds us of God's blessing of motherhood in all its forms. Complicated, chaotic, fallen, and imperfect world. <laughs> to those who have given birth this year with their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badges of food stains, we appreciate you. <laughs> to those who live through driving tests, medical tests, the overall testing of motherhood, we're better for having you in our midst. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, distance with your children, we sit with you. For those who have suffered miscarriage, we acknowledge that the child was real and mourn his death with you. For those who experience the loss of the failed adoptions or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, poked with, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms and mentor moms and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who are spiritual mothers, you inspire us. To those who lost their mother this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of their own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who are single and long to be married by mothering your own children, we mourn that the life has not turned out the way you want it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you in this complex path. To those who envisage lavishing love on grandchildren, yet the dream is not to be, we grieve with you. 
to those who have placed children up for adoption, we remember that you still hold that child in your heart. To those who will have empty your nests in this upcoming year, we both grieve and rejoice with you. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expecting and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. And there are real warriors in our midst. We honor you. Almighty God, you've ordered this world for our good. You've set the pattern of life that brings joy and self-satisfaction. We thank you for motherhood and the women who have filled that need for us in so many of the varieties. Bless these women and all the work they have done. We thank you for placing them in our lives. May they know all the prosperity, joy, peace, and love you desire for all your children. Amen. Amen. We turn to the great Thanksgiving on page 12. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, after his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and his sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us so that where he is, we might be there also to reign with him in glory. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is the you come in my blood, poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, that we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And be us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Body of Christ, broken for you. Blood of Christ poured out for you. We do not presume to come to this year's table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. Grant us, gracious Lord, to partake in this holy sacrament, that we evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. I remind you, this is not London's table, this is not the Methodist table, but this is God's table. And all are welcome to come and partake in this holy sacrament. The smaller beige cup contains grape juice. The, I mean, the smaller green cup contains beige cup. The larger beige cup contains wine. Come for all things are ready. <coughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the spiritual food which we have received through this holy mystery. Send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I know we said we're going to do a communion every other Sunday, but next Sunday is Pentecost. It's one of the high holy days in the church, and so we'll do communion next Sunday, and then we'll skip the Sunday after that. Our closing hymn is Be Thou My Vision. <coughs> Stand and sing. It's number 451. <coughs> I hope. It is. It is. <laughs> I don't always copy down the right numbers. That's why I have the problem.